you will have to accept hopefully or oh, it has already started so okay so i just want to say like thank you everyone for being here it's another session of our ask ask the Kanban trainer and today we have jennifer bullock uh, bullock is one of our um professional Kanban trainers from prokanban.org um, based in Kansas City. So again, one of the things that we're trying to do is to get like people from different areas of the planet. You know, we can all share our experiences, go through any sort of like um, informal questions. You know, how does how does Kanban work or doesn't work or help or doesn't help and all the stuff. Like, we can explore all these things. Um, as we typically say, if if you have any difficult questions, um, you ask them to Jennifer. <laughs> but um, we're going to make this a conversation. So um, as we go through questions, if you feel that you would like to contribute something about your experience or your thoughts, please um, either unmute yourself and, and come on, come into the conversation or raise your hand. And that would be great. It just it doesn't have to be just um, Jennifer and, and I talking. It, we can make a conversation, especially when we have a, a nice size group for this. Cool. Yes. So as we are waiting, as we are getting like questions on chat to, to pick up, um, what what I would like to just to, to break the ice, yeah. Um, we talk about Kanban and we talk about flow and all the stuff. And, and you know, how how in your experience, Jennifer, and you know, different places have different contexts and things like that. How does Kanban help help you, your organizations, the teams? Yeah. Jose, that's a great question. Um, so I've, I've found I've, let's see, over the past, um, I've, I've been with an organization two years, and we've, um, we've used uh, Scrum at times, and then uh, moved to Kanban. Um, more recently, uh, not that recent anymore. Um, but <clears throat> I think one of one of the, one of the biggest things that it's helped with um, is really getting the team to focus on getting the work done mm -hmm. and managing the things that um, were kind of taking a long time in our, our previous structure. Um, so really focusing on the aging um, and reducing the, the work in progress, um, limiting the number of things that they're working on, um, as well as being able to see the constraints in the system that um, where things were starting to back up. And um, it's one of the, the biggest shifts I saw in one of my teams this year was, um, was going from the, uh, the, the, the feeling that they were helping each other out across um you know as, as cross-functional team um to realizing that they weren't doing as much help as they thought when mm -hmm. they got into um the kanban uh moving into the kanban system and and really seeing the the items back up um in some of the the columns that and 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 taking a look the team it kind of stepped back and took a look at what they could do differently and and came up with a new approach to help each other so um just really getting um that connection of working together and and getting things to to done on a on a different a different level than they had before is kind of one of the biggest that's probably the biggest uh biggest change i've seen that, that one, one thing that that really resonates with me as, as i'm hearing you is them and i'm thinking aloud this 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 situation where by by having by having well it, it's kanban is not going to give us the answers it's not a magic bullet that is going to resolve everything um right but but it's seeing teams being and i'm channeling daniel valcanti um um to my own risk here um, but <laughs> it's is seeing people that may have a perception of like hey, we're doing agile or we're doing this and we're working well but helping the helping these groups of people being able to ask better questions earlier on and finding things that we can actually do better and we can get better agreements between us and there are things that maybe we are not doing well and it's just like that engine of we can actually things better you know um i, I find that really really powerful and you know you start you, you mentioned aging for me aging is kind of like boss level agility many times with for many teams it's so powerful how many of you Absolutely. in this session? Yeah, how many of you in this sessions are, are using aging or are familiar with aging? 
the aging charts and the aging metrics. Cool. Yeah. Because I mean, so many times it's like it's so powerful when it's when it's introduced many times. I, you know, I don't know what your thoughts are. Um, but it's so powerful and it can be so transformative to teams. I mean, we're looking for these kind of like transformations and there's something as not, not that it's simple, but it can be so so impactful as aging. And a lot of people don't know about it. Um but when when you can see you can see how literally can it can start changing conversations and behaviors and focus people. It's yeah, I find I love it. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. Um we've got one question already there. So shall, shall we go for one question? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Doug, would you like to 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 ask the question yourself or you want me to, to do it for you? I can do it. So it, going to what you were just saying, you know, there's usually a lot of receptiveness and, and benefit at the team level uh, because people can can uh, gravitate to it quickly. They gr grasp onto what's going on. They get immediate ben benefit. But many times those teams are kind of controlled by executives who don't have a clue. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, and as you march up the organization, that their cluelessness seems to increase. It would be uh you know and not every organization is that way sometimes uh the mandates are actually coming from above which is good but i i've talked to many people about you know how do you really engage the cios and the people in leadership and, because you have such a short attention span with them and and i struggle with that and i hear people talk I, i've heard steve tenden with Tameflow, you know talk about how to engage them um but I still struggle with, I mean, trying to get a, a CIO or even a, a senior VP's time to explain to him what Kanban is when he doesn't even have the time to give you is a very difficult challenge. And, and, and I struggle with that. And I, I'm looking for people who have success in doing that. Mm -hmm. have, you, have you had um, any luck or any things that have worked for you at all or no typically? not not really i mean i tend to work at the lower levels and, mm -hmm. and work my way up and um um so that that's been my experience and which is why i struggle with it i guess yeah okay okay jennifer any any thoughts on that this is a really really good question that is a really good question um i uh i too tend to uh uh, it it can be it definitely be a struggle um and most of my um as a team coach uh, most of my experience has been at the team level or or just a, a couple st steps above it um before i go on um i would invite anyone else in the call you know who might have some some really good examples uh to feel free to share. I can share. Yeah. <laughs> I can share something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and as you're doing that, I will go ahead and um, you know, as you as you as you, as we may have somebody <clears throat> who's coming off mute and getting ready to share. Um, I'll I'll say that um it takes time. It it's not it's not something that I've been able to do. Um quickly or from the beginning so my experience has been more in in um, having the teams um, using Kanban and 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 getting uh, building data building building uh, their experience with it and um, being able to show some of the um, improvements over time um, and that in itself has helped um, reinforce through the organization um, up up the chain yeah. up through the levels but um um specific conversations i i haven't had uh, a lot of experience with um, at the cio level anyway i was, I was we, we had we had kind of like almost the same question I'm running i'm running a um broken bank training um right now this week and we almost had a very similar question. So I was just looking for um, an image that I was going to show you where we were showing and talking about in, in, in the class. Um, I think that with Jennifer, what you said is really, really important. Many times is, there, there, is, there is one aspect with, with, with many times with, um, it's a multifaceted answer, 
Okay. One of the things is like we lack patience in business. So many times we got all these pressures and all these all these almost like I need to get instant instant results, and the challenge that we have with some of these things is that uh, what, we, what we were just saying before, like Kanban will help in some ways expose what the system does, but it's not going to give you a magic answer straight away. Where it was to say like, okay, there are problems here and we need to do something. The, um, the higher the level in the organization that the problems are going to be exposed, the, the probably the longer it takes. And one of the things that we see many times is that is a, is a complete disconnect from senior portfolio strategy management area to delivery. Um, in, in the flight levels world, we call this like, you know, the missing link in the organizations. We go potentially from some sort of like portfolio management down to, port, to, to um, team level delivery. And what we are not doing is connecting the organization together through flow, through the principles of Kanban, through the principles of flow. Yeah. How does a how how, how does a decision at a senior manager to start a new program impact the whole organization? How does this tsunami, because it becomes a tsunami, you know, translate to the to the rest of the organization and and they don't even get the opportunity to see the consequences they make they can make a decision things happen in the organization but they, there is no visualization of what happens and there is no feedback loop of the impact all they see is that things don't happen or they don't happen when they shoot or when they were told yeah so that's part of an issue it's like we, we don't connect the organization and that's something for example when we do business agility flight levels we're trying to resolve yeah the 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 other side of of this is um well i mean i'll show you the image because i, I really i'm now i'm gagging to show you this image <laughs> if if companies don't pay any attention about what you know it's easy to say let's start yeah and they don't understand what the consequences are you end up with aging charts that look like this this is on on instagram so you can take it and share it if you want um is in in our actinio instagram um you end up with charts like that um, and that's a scary, especially if I tell you that each one of these things that we have, we have 130, 39 things which are in analysis, analysis. All these are major initiatives and projects that are in progress. There is like kind of like 10 years worth of work in this company. <laughs> But yet people are working non-stop in analyze, analyzing this, in creating more stuff, you know, for the hub, like eventually going into some workshopping and development. But each one of these, each one of these things is, is, is literally, you know, it's, it's a fintech company, literally potentially millions of dollars of work and months and months and months of effort. And the company just keeps going. But it was because no one even could show them something like this to say, really is this really the right thing to do so i don't know i i i try to to show these things and i and, and use the language that a, a business manager will think i mean for example this company is in the in the stock market is like you know this is causing you unreliability this is causing you to miss miss um uh, miss your financial projections this is costing millions in in budgets we can do something better and sometimes you know start by Pay attention to age and try to do less work. Let's start less work. That you know, that might be one starting point, and then we hit, we have to go. I mean, th things like that will take months and months and months and months, if not years, to be fixed. One example. Anybody else? Sorry, that was. I mean, I don't know when you see when you see charts like that. Um, how how do you how does it make you react? But any, anybody else has any thoughts or ideas or suggestions? I hear silence. Okay, but yeah, I mean, it's a difficult conversation to talk to to CIOs, and 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 I think one one of the personally one of the most important things is be be able to talk to things that offer something that helps them resolve their problems. Yeah, absolutely. Like find out what they're, what's important to them, what speaks to them. Yeah. Come in from that side. 
Yeah. And, and for me, yeah, typically it's one of those things of like, hey, you know, I start, we, we get all these things started. We were, we told that these things are going to be done in X amount of time and they never get done. So then you might take the opportunity to say, yeah, look, you know, this is what the agent is serving you. This is what the cycle time looks like. This is where SLEs will be. Of course, you're not doing anything. Of course, look at the CFD. You know, you are, you are, you, the organization is, is choking with work and that might be the opening. Mm -hmm. Is that right, Doug? Mm -hmm. That's good. Yeah. But many times it's this, like from strategy to delivery is like huge, a huge void that, that we are not handling well. That's well, I, w one of the issues for people in leadership, I think, is their core principles that got them to where they are, mm -hmm. are opposite the opposite of many of the things that we are teaching them yeah yeah, and yeah. so they, they're sitting there you tell them that uh, you know the core principles of kanban and and limiting work and all those kind of things and they're saying well i didn't get to the position i'm in by limiting work yeah. i mean i i beat people to a bloody pulp to get the work done right that's how i progress so i i don't know i mean that that's just one problem not not the the only problem but it is a something that goes back and forth if you will um yeah. as a conflict yeah. I, I i mean uh, especially for those that you are in the us I, I i i tell you a story about something that happened to me in the us and, and the interesting thing what is when you you are you're so right about this thing i mean many times the the way that we've got promoted we go to where we are or the way the company rewards people mm -hmm. is it's the opposite of what we are, what we know should be happening in complex environments and so on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So on top of all these things is like, we need to do so much unlearning. Actually, first of all, we need to make people aware because mm -hmm. if you don't see that there is something that needs to be changed, why should you, then you have to unlearn it. And then once you are learning, then you have to pick up this new practice and become habit of each habitual to it. And it's really, really difficult. Um, the story I had is like a few years ago, I was, um, I was in, in, I had been doing some, some agile training for a, an American bank in, in London. And they said, Oh no, this is good. Could you go to the, to our offices in, um, in just opposite, um, Manhattan in New Jersey, um, and do this course. And typically, you know, you say a few things and you like, and you know, you, you, you see how they resonate. And I'm doing this class and talking about like the value of collaboration. And we all feel you, we all succeed or fail together. And because we are interconnected, we need to collaborate and support each other and look for agreements. And, and, and I had this, this group of people working in finance, in banking, in, in, in that office, looking at me kind of like flat and deadpan. And it was like, okay, I don't know what's going on. Is it my accent? Is it that, you know, what, what is going on? I, at one point I just told them, like, I, I look at them as like, am I sounding like a, I don't know, like a, like a hippie communist, something like that. And they were like, yes, mm -hmm. because I was, because we were talking about like, it's all about collaboration. It's all about the collective good of, uh, of this is collaborating between, and at least in that particular area of the bank, it was basically kill or be killed. Mm -hmm. They had policies that, you know, 20% of the team had to be, had to be, um, fired every year. Mm -hmm. you know, collaboration was never going to happen in an environment <laughs> unless they had to unlearn that, you know, they were literally killing each other. You know, your job is, you know, exclude ex the rest. Right. But yeah, sometimes we have all these things. That's a great question. Yes. Yeah. Any other thoughts? Anyone? Hi, Craig. How are you? Okay. Can I interject? Shall we shall we ask another question? So Robert, do you want to add something? I, I, I was just going to say, uh, coming to the question of um, getting the attention and the understanding of uh, CIOs and, and, yeah. and high level people. I, I know that um, a lot of people will say that that change initiatives within an organization depend heavily on uh, top-down support. And frankly, that's not been my experience. Um, my experience is if, if you can work at a relatively low level, a team level, for example, and show something works well, and it's not just Kanban, it could be any kind of 
change. Um, show that something works well, show that it can be done in a sustainable way that hasn't required a huge an investment uh, in resources in order to be able to achieve something. Then you can use that example to work your way up the hierarchy and the leader of the team that has shown this great improvement will have uh, a manager and can go to that manager uh, and say, look, we've been able to achieve this. And the manager can say, well, that's great. Let's see if I, we can do the same thing for the other teams that report to me. And if you get a number of teams that can do that, that manager will have a manager who will say, hey, you've done a really good job the past year. What have you been doing? Can we expand on that? And so my own experience has been more of a bottom-up sort of uh, improvement initiative based on what you've really been able to uh, uh, pragmatically achieve rather than a top-down sort of thing where somebody at a high level says, you need to achieve the following within the following time limit and doesn't really understand what the constraints are and uh, probably is, is taking away with one hand what he or she is giving with the other and not very coherent. So um, if the CIO doesn't see um, that there is a top priority problem in the organization that Kanban is apt to help improve, I would say you, you're not going to get their attention. You're, you shouldn't worry about it. Work from the bottom up. That's my experience. Um, I, I, will, I will say something, something that you said there. I mean, um, actually, no company should be doing Kanban or Agile just because it's Kanban or Agile. I mean, the, the Kanban or Agile or Agility should be there to, set, to help the company achieve something else survive better on the stuff so yeah i mean i i resonate with me what what one thing that was i was thinking as you were saying this is is like the example that you gave is great um and and the sort of like ad hoc agility from teams and all the stuff is is fabulous i think there is one condition in there is that the system has to allow that change to be happening at team level okay. so that it can spread or it can it can go beyond because because if, if a system stops it it has no chance either. So yeah, I mean, I guess there is an element of permissivity. So that somehow the conditions have to be created for that change, experiment, whatever it is to start happening. Any thoughts on that? For sure. Yeah, absolutely. Fabulous, come on, I really enjoy it. Any, um, shall we move on to the next question? Or Jennifer, what is the, something else that, to add? I think, um, looking at the time, let's, let's move on to the next question. All right. How do you feel about questions about safe and come? Yeah. Oh, that is a good one. I do not have a lot of experience in safe, but I have worked in a safe environment um, okay. for a short time. Shall we, get, um, shall, we get, shall we get Ulrich to ask the question so that um, people yeah. in the recording can hear it? Oh, abso absolutely. Yeah, I had I almost done with the dishes. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so here in the, I'm in Denmark. Uh, currently, we are uh, perhaps at the crest of the way of safe. So all mm -hmm. the major enterprises that are quote unquote doing agile mm -hmm. uh, are full up uh, implementing safe, uh, mostly guided by business uh, uh, management consultants. And I'm wondering uh, in that type of environment, how can we uh, help Kanban gain larger prominence? Because uh, I think it's got a lot of promise, but it's kind of being swamped out at the moment by, uh, by say. So I'll, I'll be curious about your thoughts about that. Mm -hmm. Okay, good question. What? Going back to the dishes, sorry. No worries. No worries, Ulrich. <laughs> well, I am curious, though, Ulrich, um, what, um, are there Kanban teams now in the, in the environment that you have? So I just I just transitioned out of a, uh, I had my exit from a client, a really large company, global company, uh, with, uh, some facilities here in Denmark. Well, in just in the, you know, in the, they're in the second or third year of doing safe. And they are, I, I'm, my sense was, uh, and I was helping them out with that, so I confess my sense. Uh, even consultants have to eat. Um, <laughs> and so uh, I knew that uh, it would have been really opportune for me 
in the sentence I was to start sort of muddying the waters by talking about Kanban differently than saved us it, which is of course quite limited. Uh, and I've sort of been uh, really frustrated by uh, seeing how there were so many opportunities, but uh, given that they were really, really uh, committed to doing safe by the book, and we see that in several other large companies here, there were really very few opportunities to introduce any Kanban thinking. Just the basics of saying, hey, great, do your scrum thing. How about you, you can maybe also track your lead times. Complete, closed off. Is this safe? I said, nah, it helps. All right, we're not gonna do it. So I'm seeing this overwhelming wave of safe which completely uh, 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 pushes out to the side anything Kanban related. I think that's a pity. So I'm just worrying, uh, wondering if you have any thoughts around that. Yeah, Did that help? And it does, <laughs> thank you. Yeah, and it looks like Matthew has some some thoughts, but let me go ahead and share share, share a few as, for, as well. Um, so in, in my experience, uh, so, working with scrum and working with kanban uh, even even in my teams now we still use a lot of the, the scrum uh, events um and and there's a there's an unspoken cadence to our our flow um that we don't acknowledge as much um but it's still there to an extent that we have regularly scheduled uh, retrospectives and reviews um, which would also occur within within safe <clears throat> and when I think of when I think of when I was in the um, safe environment um, one of the challenges that we had was um, with the the number of items that we were trying to to work on at once throughout um, the throughout the the train so or throughout the the time period um and so with being able to and and part of that was was the team felt that they needed to work on um certain pieces um early on so that they could get uh each thing done and as we went through um through that, we found that um, it was more and more of a challenge to try to get any of it done. So mm -hmm. I think limiting the, not only the number of work items the team has in pro progress, but the the different features that the team's working on um, has high value in, um, in, that, um, in that time period. And then as well, um i think i think all of the the elements of the combat you know the all all the different practices of um so aging that we mentioned earlier would would apply there as well it's it's all as as uh, matthew I, I'll, I'll let you speak to it a little bit more but as he mentioned in comments it's it's all about flow um and getting that getting that work to um to done and being able to deliver it get some feedback it get um close the shorten the, sh the feedback loops as mm -hmm. as much as possible and and keep delivering matthew would you like would you like to to share your experience you said that kanban is very complementary to safe yes yeah, i got my mouth full joe jose <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Giving you fair warning. Now talk. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know, well, well, people, I know there's a lot of Kanban people that sort of anti-safe, uh, but uh, I raise my hands up. Uh, I'm an SPC, um, but I I I I, I can't find them very complementary. Um, the the whole thing is about the flow from the portfolio, from the strategy portfolio, and to the operational delivery. As Jose, you know, with flight levels, there's no difference. Mm -hmm. it's managing so jennifer you just mentioned it as well understanding the whip that goes through at whatever level and getting that feedback back within the program increment um i i don't see where there's a complication at all yeah i i i will i will i will support ways i mean look i i don't claim to be a a, a safe expert because i'm not um I know that in in coaching, for example, many yeah, safe safe is, is has been a huge success at least you know in in the U.S. and it's making inroads in Europe big time. Um, 
it has a great it, 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 it's talking about CIOs and CFOs and all the stuff it does talk about things that connects to organizations that are looking for something better yeah it might not be the better solution it might not be whatever it is and by the book it's always a problem because every company has its own contest but we cannot we cannot say that safe is not being successful or useful in organizations when i'm doing coaching many times i go organizations that say we are doing safe we don't want you to come here because you are because you are a safe person we want you to come here because you know about kanban and flow and as matthew says they are compatible so what would you end up doing like you know safe you know at team level teams have to focus on delivery yeah so you could you could help teams with identifying work items thinking about what is the workflow you know what's what's the process um to measure to get those metrics to get the feedback loops that jennifer was saying so you can you can you can kanbanize a safe delivery team you could bring kanban principles and you know and practices to the pi level you can connect it to the portfolio level to the strategy level so in the end of the day it's flow yeah um the the challenge for me with with not with safe but with many with many of these frameworks or, or, or i mean one thing that i like about pro kanban and the kanban guide is talks about it's a strategy it's not a framework it's not a it's not a method yeah but what 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 i used to say is that frameworks methods even strategies can be used or abused and the problem that i see many times is that we take something by the book and we try to copy and paste and that's where the problems start i mean how many companies have tried to do a spotify and they are nowhere near what the spotify had and spotify says that they don't use the spotify method why are we copying it that uh, why are we trying to do a scrum by the book kanban by the book safe by the book is your context we we need to we need to have our brain switched on so but yeah for things like safe are totally compatible with kanban i don't see why not can i just uh add a little something yeah yeah absolutely please um so i, I would agree uh, uh in, in in principle uh, that, that should be well there are nuances of course but there should be no uh no reason why there couldn't can't be a really big overlap. Mm -hmm. uh, what I what I see and I'm familiar with not all but quite a few of the major safe implementations uh, that have been attempted here in my country. What mm -hmm. I see is that what what it seems like the management groups who are purchasing these uh, projects are buying into is this idea of a fixed blueprint that just needs to be rolled out. That's the problem. Is is that the, it's very yeah. very difficult to. Uh, mm -hmm run against the grain once they have decided to do that yeah is that is that dogmatic application or i mean i i saw this i mean a few many 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 years ago ago i don't know how when safe was was starting i think it was safe two or safe three um we we had um um in one of the meetup groups that i used to run um i uh, dean leffing was in london so i said hey, hey dean would you like to do a talk on safe for us yeah and I knew that in the room were a CIO of a fintech company, and there was a CEO of a medium medium sized company. So I kind of like I knew who they were. Yeah, I was watching them during the talk. Yeah, these two these two guys were they were guys. Um, these two guys were at the edge of their seat. Yeah, and. Dean was wonderful, wonderful in playing this thing because, like, as as he was doing his talk and all the stuff, he finished with the picture. Yeah, and the moment he said thank you very much, these two people, like you know, they just jumped and went to the front of the room, and they were both of them. That's what I need for my company. <sighs> yeah, which is okay because what the, what that picture is telling you is like this could be what agility might look like now the thing is like okay wait wait but you you don't you don't fit your company into the picture you have to say your company has a contest find your answer here are just hopefully some some general patterns that might help you it's is that is that dogmatic application of a picture when when things start breaking I mean, saving itself has, you know, I think has wonderful ideas. Wonderful. And especially, you know, I know, I know all the all the work that Luke Homan did on bringing portfolio management and better product management and customer centricity. 
you know, th those are great ideas. It's just like, you know, it's when it would un dogmatically basically switch the brain off and say, apply that because it's on the picture. That's, that's where the problem happens. Okay. So I'm good. I, 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 let's not get sidetracked by safe. I was just curious uh, what, uh, what you thought. It's, it's an excellent question because I mean, this is, this is what happens many times. And, you know, it's, is um is that kind of like blind trying to apply a picture a framework something by the book and we forget that our context is our context you know we have to we have to find our actually and it will take all these million steps to get somewhere you know that's the end game but how do you get there yeah well, and i th i think when final thought i'd i'd have on it as well is i think there's a lot of opportunity within um you know, within it, within uh, the team experimentation and, you know, when they find something's not working for them, um, if they're visualizing it on a board and, and able to see kind of what's happening to be able to experiment and bring in some of the, the ideas um, and some of the like actively managing the items in the workflow or, or you know, continuously improving and, and, you know, working on how you can how you can make improvements and some of those can come from um you know multiple places um kanban being one of them so. yeah cool all right can we do the next question i think that is a, a a wonderful question coming up by catherine catherine would you like to ask your question uh hey everyone yeah thanks so um uh i'm uh, oh, i'm from south africa i'm a delivery manager and um yeah so we've kind of got this problem but it's I've, I've had it just about my whole career but it, it's gotten really bad now and it's um it's 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 expedited um tickets or features or bugs whatever it, it might be coming into into our our flow and our kanban boards and it's it's just it's causing all of us a, a nightmare when it comes to any kind of predictability and um I don't, yeah, we've, we've got uh, whip limits, you know, we try and, you know, we also do scrum. So, you know, we, it's, it's becoming very difficult to even get too much out of a sprint these days because, yeah, we just keep getting these interruptions. And I know everyone's like, oh, expediting items is really bad. You shouldn't do it. But, you know, I, I don't know what to say. I can't say like no to customers and well, okay, you've got a bug now and this is stopping you from working. Um, you know, so I, I don't know. I just don't know if, if anyone else has experienced this and if they've got any kind of tips. So I believe it's a common problem, but I, I haven't found anyone to tell me what the answer is yet. <laughs> I, 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 I'll give you a quick answer. Don't expedite, but let's explore this more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and a, a lot of it, a lot of it depends on context, right? Um, but just to kind of give some, give some idea, give some, some situations that I've had. Um, is first and foremost if we can get the team to um be be having be breaking things down into to small valuable pieces the idea that it's as that item comes up as that urgent item comes up then something somebody's going to be freed up and able to pick that up um soon um you know if that's if that's today later today um, versus right now, um, or if it's, you know, tomorrow morning versus, you know, four o'clock in the afternoon, the day before, um, then, then that's not much to wait. That's not a long time to wait, especially depending then on um, when can that be delivered? Are you on a release cycle that you're delivering something um, a month from now, regardless of when you start it? Or if it's, a, if it's more of a continuous delivery, then that's, that's probably another conversation. Um, and then the the item, you know, if, if it's an outage, obviously that's something that needs to be worked urgently right away. So um, one of the things that when I was when my team was working in Scrum was to have kind of uh, and I don't know how this I mean, before, um, I'm going to say this before thinking completely how it fits within Kanban context, but um, but but to within that sprint allow some time. Um, you know, we know that this. X amount of things are going to come up or potential to come up. So we'll save some time out versus it's building that slack in the system um, that allows the team to pick up. Um, and that is how it relates to Kanban as well, building your slack in your system so that you're not fully loaded with um, 
planned items in the sprint so that you have some some opportunity to pick that urgent thing up as you come as it comes yeah i'll stop there do any of those yeah that definitely helps yeah especially the slack uh, i think i think that's something we must chat about yeah if, yeah. I, if, I, if I add one thing, I, um, I put on chat a video of mm. a talk that Dan did called How, to, How an Expedite Request Sank the Titanic. Um, Dan Vacanti is a, is, a, is a really good talk. And, and um, in it, he talks about like, you, know, you shouldn't be doing expediting. Now, Dan is being more, is more um, how can I say? Um, radical. Not radical, not, not radical, but he's more <laughs> like, you, you shouldn't do that. Yeah. And, and, and there is a reason for it. Um, I, if you don't mind, I'm just going to quickly go into it. When, when a company, when many times we, we offer the idea and, you know, things like I, I, I for, you know, I, I've been doing the full Kanban method for, for many, many years. And a lot of the Kanban method, for example, has been, has the, the, the idea of expedites class of service really built in into the, into the, into its um, DNA. Yeah. What many times we we don't realize is like what what does an expedite actually mean? Because once we offer people the opportunity to expedite, the company gets hooked on it like a drug, and they can they, and we are in constant expediting. We oh we can expedite one item, so we are always expediting. Um, to the point that we forget we forget what expediting means. I mean, what, what, when we expedite something. It really means that our current system is incapable of delivering something, that piece of work, through its normal process, through its normal setup. So we have to abandon our process, our workflow, our policies, and take exceptional measures to meet that, that expedite in, in a normal circumstances. So if a company is constantly expediting, what it's telling us is that in practice, it hasn't got a process or that the process doesn't work because you have to constantly abandon it and do expediting. Yeah. So I, I was, I was having this conversation recently with, with one, one of the UK banks and it was like, Oh, we have a process. It's like, no, you don't because you're telling me that you're always interrupting your process with expediting. So what you're telling me is that you don't have a process, that your process is expediting. It's, mm. you know, interruption fantastic world. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> yeah. So stop expediting. Only expedite when your process cannot ever deliver. Because if you're expediting, you have no chance of predictability, of stability, of having any sort of metrics, of answering the, when will it be done. It's just like, it's, you know, whatever you know let's figure it out process so you know that, that's kind of conversation that, that i want to say about expedite is like you know expedite is cause a lot of damage in the business because you're literally abandoning your process does that does that resonate with with people in the in the call i mean i know Ulri, you have a hands up as well but yeah any thoughts on that or, or, or any additional things uh you shouldn't be so shy about uh recommending your own work jose I think if uh, the lady, uh, I'm sorry, I forgot your name from South Africa. If you haven't already seen it, the uh, Jose's uh, Three Steps to Nirvana is a great talk. So you might want to share that, uh, a link to that, uh, Jose. Yes. And, I, and when I... I don't uh, talk about expediting there, but yeah, it's okay. <laughs> well, still, um, but I, what came to mind for me, in, yes. in addition to uh, agreeing completely what the others just said, was yes. maybe redo your static, if you're familiar with that exercise, because maybe mm -hmm. you're not in the business you think you're in. And most likely, I think Jennifer and Joseph have the uh, have the most helpful advice. But what if you're not actually in the business you're thinking in terms of the service you're providing? Maybe you can uh, revisit what's actually the expectation and and all that stuff that's in static. Maybe that can uh, reorient you towards you how you should prioritize. So that's just my idea. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I I put a link to the to the slides and talk and video of seeking Nirvana there. Um, oh, great point. Thanks. Any other thoughts? I mean, I don't know how other people feel and deal with expedites. Um, any any other experiences or thoughts in the group? I think I'll, I'll, I'll go with um, Jennifer on this one. 
you know, yeah. where you have um, expedites and, and, you know, um, and the project, I think it's important to actually try and assess if it's really an item that needs to be expedited or not. Mm. Because everyone wants to say, I want my own done. I want to get this done. I want to get that done. So um, I know you're on Kanban, but sometimes, you know, you might borrow a lift from some of the other concepts as well, where you you can have like a bit of add-on to see, okay, you know what, let's prioritize in terms of the backlog or the options or whatever you want to call your um, Kanban uh, backlog, you know, and then see, is this really a high priority or not? Should we be progressing work on this or not? And, you know, I think that is very key or else you're just going to be stuck with so many expedited items and it's not going to go anywhere. And you're going to have items aging in your backlog doing nothing. Yeah, and, expedi expedite has been expediting aging yeah, as well. Yeah. Yeah. So, and what Jennifer, what Jennifer was saying is like, you know, sometimes it's like, you know, it, it can probably, most expedited, you can say it can probably wait and then put it through the normal process. They are not that important. Matthew. Yeah, so to add to Talani's bit as well, what I normally say, I, I get them to the board and say, which do you pick which ones you want to stop right now so this new one can come in? Yeah, Over absolutely. Price, yeah, and, and then they go, oh, I asked for that one yesterday or two days ago. I just I'll give it I'll give it a mess this time. Yeah, there was a there was a team that I I did work with a few years ago, and they renamed the expert. You know, the typical expert light expedite lane. Yeah. yeah? yeah. They they rename it and I, I, it really worked, but in that context, yeah, they called it the diva lane because rather than using expediting, it's like okay, this ticket is for me as a diva. That's brilliant. <laughs> yeah. I'm I'm asking for attention, <laughs> so they they called it the diva lane, and actually it put people off for using it. Okay, so you want to be in the you want to be the diva in the diva lane? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> It just reminded me, yes. Um, yeah, like good. That. Excellent. Good, good, good. Any any other thoughts? I mean, I don't think we, any, any other questions? Any questions or any thoughts about all these conversations that we're having today? It's great. We have we have no questions in chat, so and we've got eight minutes. We can we can we can fill the time. <laughs> <laughs> uh can I ask a question if no one else wants? Come on, Ulrich. Don't want to hog the floor, but uh still mm -hmm. the silence. So since we have you, Jennifer, I, I was uh, watching uh, the other schools presentation earlier today on dependencies. So any thoughts around successful strategies for handling dependencies? That would be my interest. Hmm. I think. <clears throat> Let me think on that a second. Because I'm thinking of uh, primarily in Scrum as I'm thinking of it. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I think so. In the definition of workflow, I think the it it's a, good for the team to talk about it right there and and determine you know if they're going to um, how they're going to handle that. Um, so, for instance, identifying dependencies um, prior to bringing in something to work on, so that they can um, can negotiate when that dependency is going to be completed um, if it's another team or within their own team and and working to not start something um, until that dependency is cleared um, or until they have you know that that manageable way um, to to do it so maybe it's it's not a super quick but it's you know to basically to ideally not start it until that dependency is cleared um, and that way it, it reduces the, the the chance that or eliminates that chance that it's going to end up being blocked waiting on the dependency does that, does that help does that resonate with you mm -hmm. makes sense any other responses for Ulrich? see a couple of items in chat yeah i i, I would add the, the things about dependencies many times is that i don't think we i'm i'm a i'm a total sucker for visualization yeah mm -hmm. and then going, going into things like um using borrowing from flight levels and things like that it's so important to a understand the dependencies that there are what what nature there are 
visualize them, blend the impact, so measure the impact, and then think about what we're going to do. Some, some dependencies are going to be unavoidable, and they are okay. Some dependencies are totally wasteful, and there is no reason for them to be there. So try to find the ones that you can eliminate. Um, I, again, Dan Vacant again, he, he's, he used to have a, a motto in his company that used to be change everything by changing nothing. And, and what that, what, how I always interpreted that was that we put all this effort in trying to change how we do things, but what we forget is about something is to improve the things that we don't do. Like, you know, could we avoid a dependency? Could we avoid a delay? Could we avoid all these things? These are the things that cause delay and, and you could get, you know, if you can reduce or eliminate a dependency, that could be a significant improvement in cycle time and blah, blah, blah. So, yeah, I think many times it's like with dependencies, like you know, visualize them, understand them, have an idea of how you want to train, change it. Um, because it's good time. We got, we're got we almost at the end of the time box. Last year in the conference that we ran, the Lina Jaglo One conference, um, three, Trim again, did a talk on dependencies. It was called the Harry story of dependencies. So um, I, I recommend that you watch the video and I will recommend that you come to this year's conference. It's about a month away. Um, Lina Jack Global, 20, what is it? 20, 24, 25th of May. Um, and it's in everywhere because it's virtual. So hopefully we can see you there. Um, any thoughts about dependencies, Jennifer, anybody else? So that just to be finishing. Final thoughts, parting thoughts. We are dependent now. <laughs> <laughs> All right, okay. Time flies. I mean, I didn't, I, you know, it really, really went fly. Great questions and great conversation. Thank you everyone for, for taking part. Um, the If you want to find out more about Pro Kanban, um, Jennifer is a, or Kanban in general, Jennifer is a Kanban trainer. So, Follow her in LinkedIn. Join the Slack channel for Pro Kanban. Um, there you can, you know, ask questions directly to people like, I mean, we got, we got Jennifer, Tolani, there is Matthew here. I don't know if anybody else. Um, so the community is there to, to help with your questions, to um, suggest ideas. I mean, we are, we are, I don't think we are very dogmatic in saying this is the answer because we don't know your context. Um, but yeah, come come and join your ideas, your thoughts, share and thank you very much. The next Ask the Kanban Trainer is actually um, really soon. Is on I love this because it's on the fourth of May or May the fourth, so it's the perfect day. That that is not the Star Wars day. That's May <laughs> May the flow be with you. No May the fourth. <laughs> May the flow with you. I love you. it. Yeah. <laughs> So we are going to have, um, um, again, someone else from, from the Eastern Coast, but this time from Canada. We got Louis-Philippe Carignan, um, lovely guy. I know him. You know, he's one of those guys that has been a um, Scrum trainer for before, you know, Scrum was almost invented. I mean, you, you will see him and then he's, he's, he's awesome as well. Um, so we have uh, um, uh, Louis-Philippe Carignan, the session, next session on the 4th of May, or May the 4th. And uh, the, the day after, if you want to practice your Spanish, we have the first one of these in Spanish with Ulises González. So we can ask the same questions. And, you know, at least if you're in the UK, you will understand fascia. We go like, tha, 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 scorcho. Um, that's a Spanish for, for English speakers. Yeah. So that's a lost joke if you're not in the UK. Um, but but uh, does that exclude everyone from South America then? What's that? Does that, does that exclude everyone from South America because they don't do the theta? Is oh no, that, that that totally <laughs> we're, we're totally inclusive. <laughs> even if even if they don't do the fe -fe -fe -fe. um that's very Spanish. But yeah, no, thank you very much for being today. The the video is I mean, as a conversation, we will um download it and upload it into we, we upload it into YouTube. It should be available today or tomorrow morning. So thanks every Jennifer, thank you very much for being here. Thank Hopefully you, Jose, for hosting. It. Yeah, so probably we can do it again. And thank you all of you for the questions. It was really, really good questions. But, you know, I think we did three or four, but yeah. what questions? Awesome stuff. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank, thank you, everyone. And now, Bye. wave. <laughs>